You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Tell him I won't quit. Won't be me. Won't be me. Ain't enough for the goal. I look forward to play since I was younger. It's probably the biggest conference week for us every year. Everybody's on the same mindset the whole week. Defending state champions, you know, there's a reason for that. It prepares you for what that will be like as if it's a playoff game. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be all four quarters. They got big boys up front. We got big boys up front. We can we match up with them. As the saying goes, if you don't like the weather in Indiana now, just wait five minutes. Mother Nature has been a roller coaster the past few weeks. We all know it, and it all makes us glad that Spooler Stadium now has turf. That's where Andy McDonald spent his night. He joins us now with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Andy. Thank you, Glenn. For the first time in a long time, Bishop Dwanger versus Snyder won't determine who wins the SAC's victory bell, but that doesn't mean this classic clash isn't any less important. Both teams using it as a barometer for the playoffs. As Dwanger will jump up to 5A, Snyder looks to make a run in 6A. Bishop Dwanger at Snyder, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Both teams coming in with an identical 6-1 record. Both teams, their only loss to Homestead. First quarter, fourth and five. The Saints give it off to Patrick Finley. He takes the handoffs, weaves through some defenders, and goes down just shy of the goal line. Devin Tittman, his fellow running back, will pound the rock in the end zone soon after. Seven zip lead in favor of Bishop Dwinger. No aerial attack on this rainy, soggy night. Snyder keeping it on the ground. Lenny Bennett through the fog and into the end zone with that number one jersey. Evens the game up at seven up. Saints get down near the goal line once again to play everyone's favorite game. And name that Tittman this time. It's Lewis Tittman falls forward in the end zone. 14-7 Saints at the break. In the second half, the rain let up a little bit. The defenses did not. On fourth down, Gage Ren Barger deflects the Snyder pass, nearly comes up with a pick. That's a turnover on downs. The Saints will give it right back, though. The ball is a bar of soap. The fumble on the exchange. Donovan Ely jumps on the pigskin. The defense is holding strong with less than two to play in the fourth quarter. Panthers need a big play. John Barnes Jr. rolls out, but the wind takes it off the mark. Howie Steele is there to seal the game. Dwinger wins in a tough one on a rainy night. 14-7 the final. You know, to beat a team as good as Snyder, uh, year in and year out, you got to come out and execute in all three facets of the game. And I think we really did that tonight. It was an all-around team effort. And, you know, we all executed, did our jobs, and we came out on time. What was that last defensive stop like, and what did you see on the play you got the pick? Well, the whole last series, we knew. We knew they were going to come out. We had to make a stand. And I knew I saw it going here. I knew I, knew I had to make a play. I had to make a, make a play for my team. Uh, it gives us a lot of confidence going into the postseason when you beat a team like Snyder. You know, there's, they're pretty much as good as any team we could see in 5A. So beating a team like them in this environment is really, really a confidence boost for us. It was windy and rainy out there. Next up, Dwanger finishes off the regular season on the road at Northrop while Snyder will head to Bishop Lures. Glenn, back to you. All right. Hey, with a win tonight, Homestead would clinch its first ever SAC victory. Bell, the Spartans ranked third in the state in 6A. They were hosting Wayne first quarter. You know, the difference between this team and some Homestead teams in the past may be the defense. Bryce Raber and Nick Martin with the tackle for a loss right there. And then you're going to see Ryan Burton filling in for the injured Braden Hardwick. It's a five-yard touchdown, seven-zip Homestead after one. But, uh, yeah, things get a little slippery after that second quarter. Wayne trying to make something happen. They do here. Chris Hanna pounces on it. That's good for Derek Moore and company. But they give it right back. Ball off the receiver's hands into Jake Archbold's mitts. He gets the interception. And then Homestead marches the ball down the field. It's Ryan Burton again with the short touchdown. And Homestead wins its first ever SAC championship. They take it 24-zip over Wayne. Um, it was huge for us. Um, we won the bell. That was our goal this whole week, um, to win the bell. It was huge. Um, we're just glad we won. It's a huge uh, step for us. Um, we still have one more game uh, coming up. But we have the sectionals coming two weeks after that game. So <clears throat> um, we're hopeful we can just keep building off of this and just keep uh, preparing for the sectional game. It's a big win. You know, a night like this, it just 
you, you hope to come away clean and uh, we did. thought we played well defensively and offensively. We did enough to move the ball and get in the end zone and uh, come away with the win. At Zolder Stadium, Concordia coming off a win over Wayne last week. The Cadets looking to keep it up against Carroll. Carroll looking to gain some yardage here. It's Hunter Mertz. He had himself a good game, 63 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Picks up the first down right there as he's knocked out of bounds in the third quarter. It was a 10-zip Carroll lead. And then Logan Swain. In at quarterback, gets it to Mertz, and that's a touchdown. Again, Mertz, two TDs on the game. It was 16-0, Carroll. Swain back in here trying to make something happen, but Brock Ullman picking up the sack, a loss of five. Concordia happy about that. They wouldn't like this, though. Lincoln Lance, L squared with the interception. Defense at a premium in this one. Carroll wins it over Concordia by the final of 16 to nothing. Northside won the totem pole in a thriller last week. This week, the Legends facing their neighbors to the north in the north with Bruins, and it's the Bruins doing work early. They're already up three zip in the first quarter. Demarius Cowan running for the first down. It's a gain of 11. Bruins moving the ball, but Northside doing it too. Alex Holiday Robinson with the long run, but the ball, as slippery as it was tonight, comes out. The Bruins recover. Mike Rivard, your thoughts? Not happy. Bruins in the second quarter looking for the touchdown, but Entrell Franklin had himself a night, had five PBUs in that pick, and that would save a touchdown. But the Bruins go to the ground game. Crayshawn Menson making his highlight zone debut here, but it's Northside with a big second half as the Legends come back to win this thing 29 to 10 over Northrop. Last stop in the SAC, throw out the records for the Clash of Calhoun. Southside making the one and a half mile drive to Lewis Field. Third quarter, it's defense. Watch the big man. Did you see the spin move from Will Derrick? You gotta love it. Double nickel, pulling off the sack. Lures up 14 to six in the third. Braden Coward, oh, and that Lures game on the ground. They had a big night. 27 carries for Coward, 200 yards, two touchdowns. He picks up the first, gets the ball in the red zone there. Later on the drive, you're going to see the lefty, the sophomore, Carson Clark, the Concordia transfer to J. McJohnson. That's beautiful football on a nasty night as Lures beats Southside 30-12. to And we're going to take a quick timeout, but there is plenty more football left here in Week 8 in the Northeast State. East Noble, no doubt about it, the team to beat. Could they stay undefeated against an improving New Haven squad? We also got South Adams continuing to chase perfection in Woodland. Well, they might have something to say about that. Plus, we got trips to Leo, Norwell, Bluffton, Eastside, Busco, and more coming up next in the zone. I'm Senator Mike Brown, and I approve the Highlight Zone. If you believe in something, if the people in this room are important to you, you will keep your emotions in check. You will focus on doing your job each and every play and nothing else matters. Ignore the noise and execute your responsibilities. Whatever happens doesn't matter. Well, the folks in Turtletown have been shelling out the wins for years, and we went behind the scenes, as you heard, with Eagles coach Paul Sade tonight. You can see more from Coach on Wednesday at 6 o'clock in our Highlight Zone 2-Minute Drill segment. Meanwhile, East Noble... Number one in the state according to the 4A Sagarin ratings. The Knights could clinch at least a share of the NE8 title tonight against New Haven. Third quarter, East Noble up 28-8, to eight, and that's Bailey Parker. We're used to seeing him on offense, but he gets the pick right there. And, uh, you know, mentioning that offense from Bailey Parker, yeah, this is what he can do. He keeps it, and he's in. It's a 35-8 to eight East Noble lead, and the Knights feeling that share of the Northeast 8 title Coming closer, it's Justin Marcellus with a touchdown. East Noble now up 42 to 8, and they weren't done. Watch this. This is beautiful football. How do you make this catch in the rain? Parker to Gage Ernstberger. I have a feeling you're going to see that play later in the show. Hint, hint. East Noble wins at least a share of the NEA title with a 56 8 win against New Haven. I feel like we adjusted well to things, and I feel like. Uh, we just had an advantage. All of our guys came out here. We played hard and we played with all our hearts. And we knew we knew this was for conference, and we played just for that for our three peat. Clinched to share the conference championship, and you know it's a third straight one for these guys. So I'm I'm very proud of these seniors for you know all they've accomplished so far, and and uh, just knowing that we can come out on a on a rough adverse night 
and play with enthusiasm and excitement and uh, and play well. You know, I think that that meant a lot. Lucas is not looking like he had a great time, but hey, man, great win for East Noble. Leo with the top defense in the Northeast State Lions, giving up nine and a half points a game. They were taking on Columbia City. They were up seven in the first quarter. That was Jackson Barber, who's really coming into his own with six more. It was 14-0 Leo. Second quarter action. He's been doing it since week one. Peyton Wall, the senior, rumbling, stumbling. Big first down. He gets taken out of the 10-yard line, but Barber, Show it off the arm to Grayson LaRock and LaRock, rock solid. Touchdown for the Purple Pride as Leo wins a good one over Columbia City 29 to 14. At the courtyard, Norwell almost knocked off the Cow last week. The Knights hosting Huntington North. Norwell already up 15 zip in the second for Huntington North's defense coming to play. If you're Bob Prescott, you have to like it. The pressure here on Eli Riley, he's got nowhere to go. It's a sack for the Vikings, but you give Riley time and he'll make you pay. Riley, the quarterback, the junior, taking the snap and picking up a first down. And later, you're gonna see more ground game for Norwell. It's Max Ringer. That's Ringer with two Gs and one touchdown. 21 zip Norwell at that point. As Norwell goes on to win, they put a 43 and a 43-14 win over Huntington North. In the ACAC, South Adams can clinch at least a share of the conference title with a win at Woodland. Starfire's number two in the state in 1A, and, uh, well, it's defense early on, especially from Woodland. That was Jake Romer with the interception to James Arnold, and Woodland hanging tough early. It was 0-0 after one. Second quarter, turnabout is fair play. That's Jacob Plattner with the interception for the Starfires. This one all about the defense. It was 0-0 at the half, which is like... A win for Woodland, considering how potent the South Adams offense has been this season. But South Adams goes on to win 15-0. They're 8-0, and they clinch a share of the ACAC title for the first time since 1993. Down in Bluffton, this is an underrated matchup in my opinion. 6-1 Adams Central, 6-1 Bluffton. First quarter action, it's Blake Hirely who's been doing it all season long. The kid's got a nose for the end zone. You saw him dive in, and the Jets stake themselves to a seven zip lead at Fred Park Field. Later in the first, Cody Middlestead up the middle and he picks up a first down for Bluffton. But defense was looking good. If you're Michael Mosier, that's Big Ben Voiroll with the sack right there to stall the drive was on Hayden Nern. And then Dallas Schwaller, what a job he's done taking over at the QB position this year. Adam Central rolls in this one 33 to seven in the Bluff City. NECC Eastside clinching at least a share of the small division title last week and win against Central Noble tonight and the Blazers would win that thing outright. Second quarter action Central Noble's Tristan Harold comes up with the interception if you remember he had their lone touchdown last week for the Cougars it was 0-0 in the second. How about this more defense Carson Evers the ball pops out for Central Noble and Evers is there for the Blazers. You see number 16 coming out of the scrum with the football later Ethan Farnsworth for Todd Mason's club would break the tackle and get in the end zone. Eastside wins the NECC small division outright with a 28-7 win over those Central Noble Cougars. West Noble cracked the 3A top 10 this week. The undefeated Chargers ranked ninth in the state. They were taking on a 6-1 Busco team, and this is Josh Gross, and Josh Gross goes to the house on the punt return. 34 yards at 6-0 West Noble. Then Brandon Pruitt going to play college football at Navy. He punches it in. It's 14-0 West Noble. Why not feed the big guy? Pruitt making people miss. The kid goes 59 yards for the touchdown. They go 11 at the Naval Academy. 21 zip West Noble in business later. Churubusco gets it going through the air. It's Jake the Incredible Falk to Sam Wood. That's a pretty pitch and catch, but it wouldn't be enough. West Noble improves to 8-0 with a 33-20 win. Moving on at Southwood, the Knights of Southwood ranked third in the state in 1A. Southwood 7-0, hosting the Zebras of Rochester. First quarter, no score. Rochester going to pass here, but it's Dawson Phillip. With the interception as Rochester was moving the ball down the field, but it stopped that drive. How about this? Gabe Lloyd had a big season last year out of the backfield for Southwood, but he stopped for a loss there. 
Second quarter, the offenses start to get going. At least Southwoods does. Alex Farr, the camera's over here, son. Yeah, he knew where we were. Touchdown for Southwood. And Southwood continues to impress this season. They win it. 31 to zip over Rochester. Staying in the TRC, Tippecanoe Valley at Manchester. The Vikings, pretty nice season, 5-2 this year. Third quarter, it's already 19-0. Tippecanoe Valley in the defense, stopping Manchester's Devin Markham near the line of scrimmage. That was Ross O'Connor and Justin Snap with the stop there. How about this? Dakota Gaff with the touchdown for the Vikings, 25-0. Tippecanoe Valley, and you'll see Manchester making some things happen on defense here. Dylan Stroud with the tackle for loss, but it was Tippecanoe Valley's night. They win it 25 to zip. We got more highlight zone, including your gem of the night, coming up next. Don't let a little rain ruin your game. Grab your poncho and take a seat. The gem of the week is up next. It may be cold and it may be rainy, but we're the East Side Blazers and we're still blazing. And you're watching the Highlight Zone. Yeah! Eastside fans had a good reason to celebrate after clinching a share, or actually clinching the NECC small division outright. Congratulations to the Blazers there. Well, you know, the last few weeks have really been about conference crowns, but you can't have a crown without the crown jewel. We present you with your Week 8 Gem of the Night, thanks to our buddies at Peter Franklin Jewelers. And for this, we got to go back up to Kendallville. Bailey Parker did it on defense, did it on offense, but really... It was a great pass, but it's kind of more about the catch with this one. Gage Ernstberger, the senior. This is over the head. Kind of basket catch. A little Willie Mays action right there. And given that it was wet, that is one heck of a reception. It's your gem of the night. Gage Ernstberger for the East Noble Knights putting it on as they clinch at least a share of the NE8 title with a game against Belmont looming. Speaking of games that are looming for next week, it is week nine, which means the regular season will be over, and we're talking about playoffs after next Friday. We got Southside at Homestead. The Spartans look to finish the season undefeated in the regular season after clinching their first ever victory bell tonight. Leo at DeKalb, two programs uh, that have only, I believe, one loss on the season. Southern Wells is at South Adams. South Adams trying to stay perfect after a scare against Woodland tonight in that weather and some good Woodland defense. Woodland and Adams Central, they've had some good battles. We'll have it all for you next week on the Highlight Zone.